Hey everybody, Bjorn here, your trusted guide to real estate in Minnesota. Today we're diving into something that is still pretty new in the real estate world that might catch a few of you by surprise, and that's the written buyer's agreement. I've talked about it before, but I want to go into a little more depth because as of August 17th, 2024, if you're working with a realtor to buy a home, you'll be asked to sign one of these agreements before you start house hunting. And I'm here to explain what that's all about, why it matters, and how it can actually benefit you, the buyer. So let's jump on in. Let's start off real basic. What exactly is a written buyer's agreement? This is an agreement between you and your real estate professional that outlines the services they'll provide for you and what they will be compensated for said services. You can think of it as a roadmap for what you can expect from your agent, and it gives both of you a clear chance to set the expectations right from the start. This agreement will also include the specific details of any compensation the agent receives. This part is especially important because it makes sure that everything is transparent from the get-go. No surprises, no oh by the ways. Now, you might be wondering, why now? Why are these agreements needed now? Why have we not heard about this? Well, because this change was introduced as part of the National Association of Realtors response to recent litigation related to broker commissions or compensations. Starting in August 2024, written buyer's agreements became a nationwide agreement. So many real estate agents, especially those who are realtors, now have to use them with their clients before showing homes. This requirement isn't new everywhere. Some states already had similar rules in place, but now it's a national standard. So if you're working with a realtor across the United States, if you happen to be watching this elsewhere, you'll likely encounter it. We've had similar things in play in Minnesota for a number of years, just by the way. Now you might also be asking yourself, what's in it for me, the buyer? There are actually a few key benefits that these agreements provide. First off, transparency. The agreement lays out in black and white details what services your agent will provide, so everything's clear and upfront. If you want your agent to handle certain tasks like setting up tours or offering negotiation guidance, this is where those details get nailed down. The second key advantage is the clear communication of payment. The agreement defines any compensation between you and your agent. This doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have to pay out of pocket. More on that in just a minute. But having these details set up from the beginning prevents misunderstandings later on that could lead to a lot of headache or a deal gone bad. The third key benefit is it helps improve buyer-client relationships. You and your agent start off on the same page, which builds a stronger, more focused working relationship. This way, there's no guessing about who's responsible for what and no assumptions are left unaddressed. It's all laid out clear from day one. Now you're probably asking yourself, when do I need to sign this thing? So let's talk about this timing. The rule is that you should have a written buyer's agreement in place before you tour a home with your agent. That means whether you're going to see a property in person or virtually, the agreement should be signed needs to be signed. Now, if you're visiting an open house on your own or reaching out to an agent for a quick consultation, you don't necessarily need to sign anything at that stage. It's all about when you're actively working with an agent to view properties. Does this new agreement mean that I have to pay my agent directly? This is actually a question that's coming up quite often now, and a lot of buyers are asking it. The agreement will outline payment terms, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be paying your agent directly. Often the seller will cover the buyer's agent compensation, but these new agreements ensure that any arrangement is transparent. If paying your agent directly is part of the agreement, that's something you can discuss up front. And you can still negotiate to have the seller contribute to your agent fees if that works out for both parties. Now, Another question that comes up is, can we kind of negotiate these agreements? And the short answer is absolutely. Just like any contract, a buyer agreement is customizable. And here are some of the elements that you 
could negotiate. One item could be the scope of services. If there are specific services you don't want or don't need, feel free to bring that up. A second thing is the length of the agreement. Maybe you want a shorter term agreement if you're just getting started or perhaps a longer one if you're planning for a more thorough search. Another key point that can be negotiated is compensation. You can discuss how your compensation will work. Some agents will work for a flat fee. I've been seeing a little bit of that. Others for a percentage of the sale price. And in some cases, maybe somebody will do it for an hourly rate. Haven't come across that a lot, but it is something that, do that does get discussed. It's all about finding an arrangement that makes sense for both you and your agent. Now, here's a very key point to remember. If there's something in the agreement that doesn't feel right, speak up right away. You should only sign an agreement that reflects what you and your agent have agreed upon. Another question that comes up is, can this agreement be altered or changed? In certain circumstances, you and your agent might find that it is advantageous and mutually agreed to adjust the term. Some agreements may include specific exit conditions if needed, so be sure to read the fine print. Just know that you're not necessarily permanently locked in. Communication and flexibility are built into the process. So there you have it. This new requirement for a written buyer's agreement might seem like a formality, but it's actually here to create more transparency, ensuring fairness, and should help everyone get on the same page. It's a tool that can make the home buying process smoother and more reliable, especially when things like services, payment, and expectations are outlined in advance. If you're ready to start your home search in Minnesota and wanna know a little bit more about this agreement, guess what? Reach out. I'm here to guide you through every step of the way, from setting up your agreement to handing over the keys to your new place. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe share this video with someone because it helps me out a ton. And if you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to me directly or use that comment bar below and we can get a discussion going. I'll be back before you know it. So until then, be kind to one another.